on the average, I wait about 45 minutes for buses. And that's wherever I go. Even more so on the weekends or in the evenings. You may be out there for an hour. And if it's after midnight, you may be out there for two, three hours. Here in the Bay Area, what we have is a separate and unequal public transportation system where you find that uh, rail service is expanding considerably, largely to the benefit of affluent, suburban, and disproportionately white uh, commuters, while urban bus service, which carries primarily black, Latino, Asian, and low-income people, is systematically underfunded. I wanted to know why it was just so hard to get up, go to work, why certain buses stopped in certain parts of East Oakland where I had to walk three or four blocks, where our housing was so cheaper in these areas that I can afford but not mobility to the lifeline services I needed. Now the agency that is responsible for this mess, for creating this unequal system, is the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. And through the allocation of billions of dollars, it decides what systems are going to grow, what communities are going to benefit, and who's going to be left out. It became apparent when I was attending these MTC meetings expressing the needs of the community that we needed these buses that linked us from East Oakland to downtown Oakland for jobs, that linked us to malls and shopping centers that had nutritious food. All these routes were being cut in addition to charging us more money, cutting transfer times, you telling us we have to catch more buses, and then we have to, uh, you know, have less transfer time to do it. We find that if you look at, over the last 20 years, the service levels of AC Transit, it has actually lost about 30 percent of its service, while at the same time, BART and Caltrain, which serve a different demographic group, again, more affluent, more white, they've actually doubled their service, even though rail is exponentially more expensive to build than uh, expanding bus. In 2005, we brought a lawsuit against the Metropolitan Transportation Commission in conjunction with many other groups to challenge this system of inequitable funding. The name of the litigation against MTC is Derensburg versus the Metropolitan Transportation Commission and our lead plaintiff, Sylvia Derensburg, volunteered to be a plaintiff in this lawsuit. And she's quite a remarkable spokesperson because she lives this issue every single day. And all this AC Transit was doing to adjust to a system that gave more money to the suburbs and less money to the urban community that needed it most. We call this transportation inequity. We call it discrimination. And we think it should stop. You need ground transportation to get to BART. They work hand in hand. Don't bite one hand to feed the other. That's all we ask. And we will continue to voice that it is not okay to balance the budget on the backs of poor, low-income, Blacks, Hispanic, and Asian populations of Oakland. But I think what will make the longest impact is a combination of these multiple strategies, litigation, uh, grassroots organizing, policy advocacy, keep the pressure on these decision makers in the Bay Area so that they allocate the funding equitably. And we see a power out of control that says we can do what we want to do and, you know, catch us if we can. And we say, yes, we can catch you because it's a matter of life and death. We're not asking for money that's not there. We're asking for flexibility so that we might use this money to support what we already have. And we say no more death to public transit. Revive public transit. We need funding dispersed properly and equally for all citizens, all regions of the Bay Area. What we think is important is to essentially be watchdogs. One example of that is our work with Urban Habitat one of the first environmental justice organizations in the Bay Area that has been demanding equitable funding from MTC for decades. Recently, Genesis, a faith-based organization, has caught the attention of, of the public and of decision makers by demanding better funding for AC Transit.
Our goal over the last years has actually been to try to restore funding that goes all the way back, you know, 20 years ago. We're not just talking about transportation for transportation's sake. These are actual uh, transfers of wealth by the government into communities. So we care about who's going to benefit from those transfers of wealth. These are billions of dollars that result in economic development, they result in jobs, they result in connecting people from their homes to every kind of opportunity you can imagine. And it's unfortunately we had to take it to this level. But we are prepared to take it. We have shown you we're prepared to take it to whatever means necessary. We're in it to win it because it's not a matter of ego, it's a matter of living. When Sylvia Derensburg uh, first came and met with us, um, we had no idea the amazing work that we would do together. Um, ordinary people got together and really shook things up. And I think we can duplicate that time and time again as more and more people understand this issue and get involved. We gained some ground, but we haven't got what we needed yet. So we're coming back and we're in it to win it for all populations that have been overlooked and ignored.